Hi, my name is Joe and I'm going to show you how to use the supercritical extractor. This is our supercritical extractor. It's a Teledyne ISCO SFX 2-10 supercritical fluid extractor with a 260D syringe pump, currently using liquid CO2. It also includes a 100D modifier pump. I'm going to start by showing you the different components of the extractor. This is our CO2 tank. You must use liquid CO2 and it's important that the tank is equipped with a dip tube to utilize the liquid at the bottom of the tank rather than the gas floating on top. You also want to make sure the hand wheel is placed on the right side to access the liquid CO2 as the left side will utilize CO2 gas. This extraction unit has two pumps, pump A and pump B. The CO2 cylinder is connected to the back side of pump A. Liquid CO2 is pressurized to the supercritical state in pump A. The CO2 travels to the extraction chamber where it flows through the product being extracted and out through the restrictor tubing into a test tube. Pump B is the modifier pump. An inlet filter is attached to pump B to allow the addition of a modifier. This is the extraction unit where the actual extraction takes place. It has two extraction chambers labeled A and B. The extraction chambers are supposed to be separate, but we've noticed some leaking between chambers, so if accuracy is desired we advise using only chamber A. The valves furthest to the left are the vents. They allow for the pressure to be released from the chamber. The middle valves are the supply valves, which bring CO2 and modifier from the pumps into the extraction chamber. And the valves furthest to the right are the extract outlet valves where you can control the flow rate of extract exiting the chamber. The temperature can be adjusted by the panel on the front of the extraction chamber. Start by pressing the PVSV button which stands for present value set value so the green light is displayed next to the SV. You can now adjust the temperature by selecting the digit you wish to change and using the up down arrows. When you have the correct temperature, press enter. Then click the PV SV button again so the red light is displayed next to the PV, which allows you to see the current temperature inside the chamber. This extraction unit also came with a restrictor heater. This is supposed to reduce blockage in the outlet tubes by preventing ice buildup during extraction. Unfortunately, all the parts couldn't be found, so it currently can't be used. The last piece is the control panel. This is where you monitor the extraction and control pressure and other various parameters. Now I'll show you how to do extractions. There are two types of extractions. The first is a basic CO2 extraction that only requires pump A. And the other is a modifier extraction that uses both pumps. Regardless of the type of extraction you do, your raw ingredient that is being used for extraction must first be added to either or both of the extraction chambers in the extraction unit. The material being extracted goes inside these cylinders, which are assembled by placing the small disc-shaped filters inside the screw-on bottom and top pieces. The top piece has the knob while the bottom piece is flat. The manual recommends having the filters face in the same direction each time, so some filters have an A or B mark to help with consistency. You can then fill the cylinder with whatever material you're using for extraction. Then screw on the top piece. The cylinder is then easily clipped into the screw-on lid to the chamber assembly. Make sure this chamber lid contains the black, white, black rings near the connection point, as these rings are important to create a seal. The lid can then be tightly screwed into the extraction chamber. I'll show the basic CO2 extraction without a modifier first. Start by setting the controls to utilize each pump independently. First, click Menu, then A button for more options, then click 4 for multi-pump mode, and 4 again for independent. Click enter, then the D button three times to return to the home panel. This allows you to control pump A and B independently. The next step is to add your liquid CO2 to pump A. Fill pump A, open the cylinder, and the inlet valve. On the control panel, press refill, pump A. 
flow rate of liquid CO2 entering the pump is shown in the bottom left hand corner and can be adjusted by clicking the A button. The volume of CO2 in the pump is shown in the upper right hand corner. The pressure should be in the 800 to 900 psi range. If it drops below 800 psi, you may be low on liquid CO2. It will stop automatically when full. When you're done filling the pumps, make sure you close both valves. Try not to over tighten the valves because they're easily damaged. When you're ready to run, make sure all the valves are closed. The next step is to set your pressure. What you're seeing now is basically the home screen when running in independent mode. If you don't see this screen, repeat the steps previously shown to operate in independent mode. To adjust your pressure, simply press the A button underneath where it says pressure and enter the desired pressure in PSI. Now's the time to go back and double check that all valves are closed. When everything's ready to go, press run on the control panel. The control panel should show the pressure rising and the volume dropping. If that's not the case, check your valves again to make sure everything's closed. You can easily tell when the pressure is approaching the set level by the change in pitch. You can open the inlet valve to the extraction chamber anytime during pressurization. You will likely hear the pump adjusting to the opening of the valve. You'll be able to tell when the chamber is full by the sound. Slowly open the extraction outlet valve when you reach the desired pressure or after the set amount of static extraction time. You should quickly see your extract being produced. When doing an extract without a modifier, you will likely see ice build up as well. This can cause blockage in your outlet line. My favorite solution to this is placing the test tube in a hot water bath. You can see the flow rate, pressure, remaining CO2 volume, and extraction time on the control panel. To adjust the flow rate, simply tighten or loosen the outlet valve. Maintaining a low flow rate will prevent excessive ice formation. You can allow all the CO2 from the pump to pass through the chamber, or stop it at any time by pressing the red button on the control panel. Before you can remove the extracted material, you must decompress the chamber. First, close the inlet valve. You can speed up the process by opening the vent valve. Allow the chamber to fully decompress. Then you should be able to remove your product from the cylinder. Unscrew the lid. Make sure the black and white rings I mentioned previously are not left inside the chamber. Now I'll show the extraction in modifier mode. The process is mostly the same with only a few simple alterations. First, you need to change the controls to modifier mode. On the control panel, click Menu, A for more options, 4 for multi-pump mode, and this time click 3 for modifier mode. Then, press Enter and D three times. This brings you back to the home panel, and now you can use both pumps in unison. The home panel is slightly different in modifier mode. It shows the set pressure, whether the modifier pump is on or off, the modifier percentage, as well as the CO2 in pump A and modifier in pump B. You can also see the flow rate, current pump A pressure, and extraction time. Set your pressures and modifier concentrations. The modifier percentage and set pressure can easily be changed on the home screen by clicking the letter directly beneath each value. Fill pump A the same way we did before. Make sure you close all valves when done. To use the modifier, you have to fill up the modifier pump. Open the inlet valve on the modifier pump and make sure the tube is placed in the modifier fluid. On the home screen, press the refill button and B. The volume of modifier in pump B is shown in the upper right hand corner. It will stop when full or you can stop it manually by pressing the red stop button. Close the inlet to pump B, but don't be too forceful as it's easily broken. Double check that all valves are closed. When your pressure and modifier concentrations are set, press run.
The pump will slow when it's fully pressurized and at any point in time you can open the inlet valve to the extraction chamber. When the pressure in the chamber stabilizes, you can slowly open the outlet valve. The modifier allows for higher flow rate without any ice formation. The hot water bath isn't necessary in the modifier mode. But too high a flow rate can still cause problems. Remove the extracted material as shown before. When finished, clean the extraction vessels at a sodicator with distilled water. You may have noticed that I never mentioned the valves between each of the pumps and the extraction chambers. These valves are broken, likely due to over tightening. However, the extractions still work due to the check valves preventing backflow into the syringe pumps. If any valves are replaced, I recommend purchasing the rod type valves over the round valves as the rods are easier to control and less susceptible to damage. Make sure you check out the manual for safety information, maintenance, and other ways you can use this supercritical fluid extractor. So that's how you use the supercritical extractor. I hope this video helped.